In the middle of the night, there was silence. No one was awake, not the cats, not the dogs, not the birds, not the trees, not even the cars that go fast and uneasily through the streets. Traffic had been captured and seized with metal chains and metal cages. They had stopped that noisy beast. We slept in slumber and delight, knowing no God nor man bore witness, not until the dawn of light. But we heard a noise, and we heard it loud. I woke up to the sound of Familiar noises, but they were not meant for me, not at this hour, not at this time. I knew something was wrong, and the world of fantasy and bedtime stories was gone. No more rhyme or reason behind what I had witnessed. It ended, but this story had just begun. Despierta, wake up! Even to this day, that night seems like a blur. Makes me dizzy, and it's all so complicated to retell, honestly. Wouldn't even be too sure where to start. I just know that on that night, I was the most scared I had ever been in my life. I was used to seeing the world in shades of pink. Pink ice cream, pink ribbons, pink dresses. It was all tainted in pastels and technicolor, illustrated like the books my papi used to read me, those fables and ta with talking anthropomorphic animals who used to dress up like a wolf wearing a suit, a fox wearing shoes. I used to think that was it that my world was nothing pure and magical. Like cartoon characters jumping out of the screen, into the streets, my school, and even my house. Living under a brittle roof, I never really saw how thin these walls would end up being. In my quinceañera, I wore my big dress and even bigger hair. I was ecstatic because I saw myself in the mirror and I saw princes were dying for. My little sister wore a dress too, the exact same color as mine. And I was so happy that I didn't even have time to be mad. I didn't have a party like all those girls, but I did have a dinner with my family. My tias and tios were there, my nanita and all my primos who I love more than I can say. My mommy was there too. She was the first to get there since we got there at the same time. But my papi wasn't, he was late. And quite frankly, I was used to that. I remember everything so perfectly well, because when everything goes so perfectly well, that's all you remember. But this world of sunshine and rainbows had some gray that my eyes never noticed. And I had barely learned how to read fairy tales when those around me were reciting tragedies. My parents sat at opposite ends of the table, but I couldn't see that. Only these big balloons that covered their angry glances at each other and the loud music that drowned their sarcastic jokes. Two weeks after that fun party, my mommy surprised me with a gift. We would go on a cruise ship with her and my sister and me and... What about Papi? He's far too busy, you know. He can't miss work. Of course, that made sense. Everything made perfect sense to me. I wasn't given the book, but merely the chapters, all in different order. And even so, I wasn't even sure of the plot taking place. So I disc discarded them, even when I was handed them too often. We flew some days later, and even if I thought I was done looking for answers, I was scald into the tallest tower where the spindle sang my name, all to keep on touching that needle that brought me nowhere. Mommy, why did you get four seats? So that you can have a space to sleep and put your legs up, like a bed. Of course, that made sense. No malice was sensed in her words, no ill intention, no evil witch with a poisoned apple, no dragon guarding a book of truth, nothing, no, not, nothing at all. The trip was fun. I saw magic, even in places where magic shouldn't have been. I love seeing the sights, the sunsets on my balcony, and children running and playing near the pool, listening to the waves crash against our boat. They would send you to sleep at night and wake you up just before breakfast. The horn blowing every hour or so, keeping you alert and expectant of the next one. The food being delicious, the best food I have ever tasted, and the people smiling when we walked into every room. The hostesses would say funny things too like asking for Martinez Ortiz, it's Quevedo. My mommy would interrupt them quite a lot, especially when they would get her name wrong or when they would get other things wrong, which surprisingly happened quite often. Are we waiting for someone else? No, we're all here. I have you seated for four persons today, are you sure? Yes, I am sure. 
Why was she being so rude? I mean, it was no big deal. I mean, these things just keep kept on happening at every restaurant, but it was no big deal, was it? And why would all of them make the same mistake? I mean, no, almost as if, come on, we're going to be late. Her schedule was so packed and busy. I barely had time to think. Did I need time to think? I'm not sure. I barely had time to figure that one too. I don't think my mommy was fully aware that things were going to change drastically a year after that. I don't think anyone could have been aware. I was 16 now, still immature, and no one, one day she asked me something, not out of the ordinary. She wanted me to send a text with her phone while she was driving. I saw her chats and clicked on the wrong one, a conversation with my tia. I knew I wasn't supposed to see that or be there, but I stayed because even when I perfectly knew that was wrong, catastrophe called upon me and the truth sat its place. I don't know what to do with him. You should just be honest. I mean, it's your husband you're talking about. He still hasn't paid for my t the ticket I had to cancel, and it's not only the plane, it's the two hotels and the cruise. I know. Have you at least talked to him since she took the phone away and, you know, just said, I'll just do it myself. You're taking too long. I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. That conversation wasn't meant for me to read. That wasn't my place in the story. I should have stayed a side character and not gotten involved, but I did. Why? It was the way they said those words, or rather, the way they typed them. They weren't making up stories of fantasy anymore. Very clearly, they were conjuring words that read as prose rather than verse. Everything was different now. My, but my little sister, well, she remained hopeful. She was stand, so of course the stories she pl saw played out were puppet performances of the truth. I saw Shakespeare's act over and over again, and it was exhausting. I saw my father in empty rooms and empty beds. I saw him in empty cars and empty sidewalks. My hand began to grow cold and unkind. Before that, it was warm and generous, but now how can one hand be warm and generous when there's no one there to hold it? My dad was no longer staying with us, but with my grandmother. He said he had to take care of her, but I saw it the other way. I kept going back to that trip. In my head, it all made sense. Everything made perfect sense. But now I was 16, and the question still lingered. Mommy, why did Dad miss the trip? He had work. You had work, too. He couldn't miss his. I could. Mommy, did you guys fight again? She didn't say anything this time. I moved on, though, with my life. Regardless of that canceled plane ticket, hotel room, and cruise pass. I was okay. I was trying to be happy. I could never stop thinking, though, because my mommy had woken something in me that could never be put back to sleep. Curiosity does kill the cat, and when I tell you I have six lives left, then you have to believe me. Mommy, why did Dad miss the trip? I never got an actual answer to this, not to this day, and I imagined the worst and the worst until, levántate, mija, levántate, get up. It's like 3 a.m., what happened? Get your sister and come to my room, grab your phone, and lock the door. What? I don't, what? <laughs> he has the keys, just go. Nothing made sense anymore. That's when many chapters lined up in the right order. Sadly, it wasn't me in control of the image they were creating. We heard music and noises coming from the front. Loud ones, too, someone trying to open it. Call him. Me, me, why me? Why is he here? Is he coming back? Call him and answer and tell him to leave. Maybe he's tired. Can we just let him in? I was holding her phone in my hands, the same one I had snooped around in just weeks before. I was between him and her, with this loud musica ranchera he was blasting on his radio, annoying, piercing trumpets blaring through the speakers, and words, you know, racing through one after the other. She was growing more concerned. I remember seeing the world in shades of pink. Pink ice cream, pink ribbons, pink dresses. But now I was all tainted in dark, dark colors and bloody, bloody red. Like the books my dad used to read to me. Those with fables and talking animals. He became a character in my book. A wolf wearing a suit. A fox wearing shoes. That night was, and still is, just a blur. I never went back to that moment, but I was reminded of it quite a lot. I saw those images in empty seats at church. I heard that music on old radio stations. I felt that fear every midnight, and I had to do it all by myself because my little sister was still 
being told a tale of heroes and villains, and I was no author to change that story for her. There was a part of me that wanted to protect her, but another that truly wanted nothing to do with it. I wanted to extract it from me. These words, they were being written in my heart. They were not meant to me. I came back home right after school, and I saw my mommy in the living room. She was reading a book. I walked inside, and I saw an almost empty house. Pictures were taken down, flower vases were missing, two chairs, a radio, pillows, a desk. Things that made my home feel like home, and now they were gone. She confessed he had been there hours before, and simply took what he thought was his. Well, he took with him more than that. Mama, why did that miss the trip? He just did. I don't think she wanted me to know. Maybe it was easier that way, but my heart burned to know. Even if I saw it, even if I lived through it, I still had to know. Why else would he have skipped the trip? I mean, it was obvious. I saw these moments play out, all these chapters coming to place, but I needed someone to say it. One day, we drove to my grandmother's house in a, that familiar path with nice streets, two pharmacies, a park, and a bench. I saw a dent in a metal fence that was not there years before. I saw in that dent many things. I saw guilt, my guilt. And I saw my father fleeing the scene, taking the car and crashing against it, then not looking back. Now there was a physical reminder of what he had done, and my heart burned in anger once again. We moved houses for the very first time, and I was older. I was 17. I was grown and mature, and my quinceañera felt like so many scenes ago. That story that I see and the world that I live in aren't cartoonish or fun anymore. They are in May two-dimensional, and they lost their purity and their magic. Like cartoon characters jumping onto the screen, away from the streets, my school, and even my house. Living under a brittle roof, I never really saw how thin these walls would end up being. Mommy, you canceled Dad's airplane ticket, didn't you? Yes. You did the right thing. <laughs> Aranza Martinez. <laughs>